this is day nine of my six mark challenge for the AQA GCSE science exams. In the run up to the exams, Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a new video every day with a six mark question so that you can practice how to answer them and see how many marks you would have got. You can find a link in the description below to each week's questions and also access all of the previous videos via the playlist. Today, we're back to physics paper one and another one of the required practicals. Before you dive in, I just want to remind you once again that although you do need to lay out your ideas in a logical order, there are no marks for writing in full sentences. And in fact, your examiners are just as happy or even happier with bullet points or a numbered list. You also should pay attention to the fact that these six mark questions are often broken into chunks. So here we've definitely got two parts. We've got the fact that we need to describe how we could complete the investigation, but also we need to risk assess it as well. So make sure that you don't just stop writing after the first part. If you haven't already, pause the video and give yourself six minutes for this six mark question. Before you start writing a method for one of the required practicals, or in fact any investigation in the science exams, it's a good idea to identify explicitly what the independent and dependent variables are. Because if you've written a method that doesn't include changing the independent variable, or doesn't include measuring the dependent variable, then you're going to be capped at quite a low mark, even if you've put in lots of other lovely detail. So in this investigation, we're changing the length of the wire, that's our independent variable, and then we're measuring the resistance. Now, obviously, you can't measure resistance directly, so instead you're going to need to use a voltmeter and an ammeter to measure potential difference and current, and then use that V is I times R equation, which is rearranged to be resistance is potential difference divided by current. Now, this is going to be quite a long method, and there's going to be a couple of little variations where you could do things one way or you could do them a different way. So first off, we need to build a circuit. So you build a series circuit that contains the wire that we're going to measure the resistance of and also a power source. So that could be a battery pack. It could be a power pack and an ammeter. Now, you may have also included in there a variable resistor. I don't actually know any schools where they do, but this is how the exam board recommends doing it. So it's probable that you've seen that in a textbook or a revision guide and you may have written about it. Then we're going to use a meter ruler and we're going to measure 100 centimetres of this wire and attach with crocodile clips our voltmeter in parallel across that wire so that we can measure the potential difference. We're going to use the voltmeter to measure the potential difference and use the ammeter to measure the current. And as ever, you want to say what equipment you're using to do a particular thing. We want to take those readings nice and quickly because if we leave the circuit connected for too long, the wire may start to heat up and that would affect the resistance. Then you're going to turn off your power supply or disconnect it and then reconnect it and take those measurements again. So this allows us to check for repeatability and to calculate a mean potential difference and a mean current for that same length of wire. So we haven't changed anything yet. We've just done three readings for 100 centimetres of wire. Then we can calculate the resistance using V divided by I for that particular length. And now we're ready to change the independent variable. So now we move those crocodile clips and move the position of the voltmeter. We're going to repeat our readings of potential difference and current and calculate resistance for the new length of wire. And we're going to work our way down probably only as far as 20 centimetres, because if you get as far as 10 centimetres, the wire starts to get hot, which we will get onto. So once we've got all of those resistances for the different lengths of wire, we can plot resistance against wire length and use that to analyse our results. And then in terms of the second part of the question, the major hazard is that if you have high current, then you end up with your wire heating up. It could melt, it could burn you, all those sorts of things. So in order to lower the risk, we need to keep the temperature low and therefore we need to keep the current low. So one thing that you could talk about is using a really low potential difference power supply, because if the potential difference is low enough, then the current will be low as well. But you can also talk about using that variable resistor to increase the resistance of the circuit. So basically what the exam board suggests is that as your wire gets shorter and shorter and they only include the part of the wire that you're measuring in the circuit, you use the variable resistor to add back the resistance that you're sort of taking away. So although your voltmeter is measuring just the resistance of the wire, which is coming down, the resistance of the whole circuit isn't changing. And that therefore means that the current stays the same and therefore um, it doesn't get too hot. In reality, I prefer the method where you're keeping the whole wire in the circuit, but you're just moving your voltmeter. But either one of those would work. 
Now, in terms of what you're actually going to have to have included to get six marks, there's obviously a huge amount of detail here, but we're going to need to include taking readings with the voltmeter and the ammeter and specifying what those are for. We're going to need to talk about how you would use those readings, so calculating a resistance and then processing that data, probably with plotting a graph at the end. We need to make sure that we have actually changed the independent variable. And then finally, because this is um, a two part question, you need to make sure you've done that risk assessment. So if you haven't mentioned that risk assessment, you would be capped at a level two answer and you would have a maximum of four marks for this question. Tomorrow, we're back to biology paper two. Remember, you can find a link in the description below for all of the different questions for the videos this week and also a playlist of all the previous videos in case you've missed any. Thank you very much for watching and I hope we'll see you back tomorrow for day 10 of the six mark challenge. If you have found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC science revision videos coming soon.